G'day Groovers, how's it going? Welcome back, welcome back. I'm in Valor Beach, again. Right, it's a good place. It is a good place, I really enjoy my time here. And you can understand why. Uh, okay, so today I'm here with Percy. Hello, he's, thanks for having us over Groover. Good to see you. Thanks Percy. Now I'm here with Terry. G'day everyone. Thanks for having us over Groover. So today what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make some choco chutney with some chocos that I got from work. Because I woke up this morning and I'm now a trans vegan. Yes, a trans vegan. Oh, this is gonna be good. What's a trans vegan? Oh no, Groover. You know I like a good piece of meat. Well, it's all good, Percy, let me explain. A trans vegan is somebody who has the ideology of a vegan, but eats meat and dairy. <laughs> it's a thing. What backward ass parentry is that? That makes no sense. You work in an abattoir. And look at the shirt you got on. True, but I hate animal cruelty and suffering. I do my best to make sure that it doesn't happen where I work. I'm an animal welfare officer. I'm a QA manager. I'm a meat inspector. So it's my job to make sure it doesn't happen and the there's no suffering. Um, uh, we apply the five freedoms, which you can find on the AMPC website, the Australian Meat Processors Council website. Where they have the training videos that I'm in. <laughs> and it's all about the animal welfare. You'll find it there. Okay, trans vegan. What are we making today? Okay, here we go. We're going to make Groover's Choco Chutney. Now, it's not full vegan. It's sort of kind of, uh, it's a plant-based thing, but the chocos were grown on a choco vine outside my office, and I used meat meal as a fertilizer. So, yeah, kind of, <laughs> it's just the way the world works. Choice, good cook. Right, so it's that time of the season when the chocos come on, right? So this is what you want to do with them, because you don't want to waste them. And this has been a practice, they've been, they've been using them for years, especially because they only go for the season, only goes for probably about a month, six weeks, sort of thing. And then, because you get a heap of chocos, and everyone's giving each other chocos and all that. So you've got to make them, preserve them. So what's the best way? Turn them into pickles. Oh, so easy to grow chocos, food again. Right, so what we got, I've got a kilo of diced chocos and onion with about a cup full of salt. Prepare this a couple of hours before, even do it overnight if you want. And all it does is draws all the, all the moisture out. Um, it just softens it up, it saves you cooking the ass out of it, you know. So it saves a lot of time. What we're gonna do is just rinse that off a little bit, get the salt off it, we don't want it too salty, but just enough salt will be left on it to help with the cooking. Your two teaspoons of curry powder, two teaspoons of mustard powder, about 400 grams of sugar, I want to use about probably just half a teaspoon of uh, five spice, and we're going to use two cups of vinegar and a little bit of cornstarch. Now the cornstarch is just going to thicken that up, and we just put that in towards the end. Oh, right, and I'm going to chuck in some uh, mustard seeds at the end and some corn. I'm going to put some corn in just towards the end. Uh, it's just frozen, but thawed out now. <laughs> right, we'll use that just towards the end. And fuck, okay, and voila. Two cups, where's two cups? Two cups, fucking right up there, Jesus. Two cups of vinegar, we'll put it in our bowl. Two oop, teaspoons, curry powder, two of the mustard powders, 400 grams oop, of sugar. and just a half. Don't want to overdo it, because it's very potent. It smells all right too, eh? Got it together, let's give it a stir. And try to dissolve that as much as possible. And we're just gonna put that in a little pot. We're going to, not too hot, too fast, just going to bring it on. Then we're just going to let it simmer for about 40 minutes. 
pretty easy. So there you go, I've just got it on the heat straight away, so it'll just slowly come onto the boil and we'll dissolve all that sugar as it happens. Uh, so we've got about 15 minutes to go, I'm going to put in some corn kernels. Okay, so the next bit of the process, we're going to get a tablespoon, a tablespoon of corn flour. And we're just going to make a little paste. Using a bit of vinegar, put that vinegar in there. And also what I'm going to chuck in is about a tablespoon, I think it's about a tablespoon, yeah, of a tablespoon of mustard seed. Corn flour in. Well, this is really going to thicken it up. <laughs> now it's nice and thick, eh? Now it's nice and thick. Alright, so now we've just spurned it in to some jars. Look at that! How good is that? Awesome! Awesome! Alright, Gruber, what's your take on all these vegans that are storming abattoirs and chaining themselves up to bloody restraining races and running through farms and letting cows out out on the road? Like, they could kill someone. What's your take on that? Hmm, vegans. No. Pretty fucking stupid, really. A, trespass. B, they could have got hurt. I mean, vegans, fuck, what are you thinking? You could have got hurt. Now, if the bosses of these abattoirs said to the workers, could you please get rid of these vegans? Uh, wouldn't have been pretty. You could have found yourself in the way of all these cows. Cows don't discriminate, vegan or not. You could have got yourself really hurt. Now you're allowed a free speech, freedom of choice, don't eat like meat, don't eat it. The less people that eat it, comes to something, goes down, and it stalls the industry. Good on you. Right, that's what you want. But don't shove it in our faces. Fuck yeah, now. Oh, then you've got better things to do. Alright, cheers. Anyway, thanks for watching.